Hello, my name is Mario Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video, we are going to study dividing decimals by decimals. We are told that to divide a decimal number by a decimal number, we're supposed to move the decimal point in both the dividend and the divisor. However many steps necessary so that the divisor becomes a whole number. So here, the decimal point would move one, two, three steps. Yeah, so we we'll get four as a device. And so we need to move it three steps here too. Over here. So our problem becomes 344 divided by four. I'm gonna write it here now. And now we divide normally. Four goes to 34 eight times. Six times. Okay. So the answer is 86. The answer to the original problem is 86, and the answer to this 344 divided by 4 is 86. What happens here is that both the dividend and the divisor get multiplied by 1000. 0 0.004 became 4, and 0 0.344 became 344. Both of these got multiplied by 1000. That's what the moving the decimal point three steps means. And if you think about it this way, it makes sense. Division can be thought of as how many times does the divisor fit into the dividend. So 4 fits into 344 86 times. And 4 thousandths fits into 344 thousandths the same amount of times. Here's another example, 19.56 divided by 0 0.3. We need to move the decimal point here, just one step. So we get 3. That means that we are multiplying this number by 10. And here we move decimal point from here to here. It means this number got multiplied by 10. And then we divide by 3. And 3 goes to 19 six times. 15, it goes 5 times, 6, it goes 2 times. And the decimal point is here, so it goes to the quotient here too. So our answer is 65.2. And I will write here the problem that it was changing to. It was changing to the problem 195.6 divided by 3. And the answer was 65.2. So both the dividend and the divisor got multiplied by 10. And that does not change the question. It does not change the answer. 3 goes to 195.6 that many times. And similarly, 3 tenths goes to this number the same amount of times. And we're going to look at this principle a little more in a bit. Let's look at some more examples. Here, 0 0.08 divided by 0 0.04. You can think of this as... Four hundredths and eight hundred hundredths. How many times does four hundredths fit into eight hundredths? The answer is obviously two. But to illustrate the principle we are using when dividing by decimals, I'm going to multiply both the dividend and the divisor by ten. That's like moving the decimal point. You get zero point eight. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Divided by zero point four. And here, 0 0.4 fits into 0 0.8, or 4 tenths fits into 8 tenths again two times. And that does make sense, right? I'm going to multiply both again by 10, and I get 8 and 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. Again, I multiply both by 10, we get 80 and 40. And it's the same relationship. Again, 40 fits into 80 two times, and you can go on. because it's a general principle. You can multiply the dividend and the divisor by some number, and the quotient does not change. Most of us have already seen this with equivalent fractions. Remember, fractions are division problems. They can be thought of as division problems. So this is 3 sevenths, but it's also the division problem, 3 divided by 7. And with equivalent fractions, you can multiply both 
the top and bottom number by something and get an equivalent fraction. So for example here, 3 times 2, 7 times 2 would give us 6, 14. And 3 times 3, 7 times 3 would give us 9 over 21. These are equivalent fractions. And the same principle applies. You can multiply the dividend and the divisor by some number and the value of the expression or the quotient does not change. And here are two more examples where we can use this principle and get very easy division problems. 16 divided by 1 half. I don't have to multiply both of them by 10. I can multiply both of them by 2. And if I do, I get 32 here. Then half multiplied by 2 is 1. And so we get a very easy problem. The answer is 32. And it makes sense to think that half fits into 16 32 times. Here's another one similar. Here I'm gonna, here, since this is 0 0.25, I'm gonna multiply both by 4. Because then I get 1 as a divisor. And this is 4.8. So the answer to both problems here is 4.8. Very easy. Lastly, we're gonna look at this example here. It is 13 divided by 0 0.06. I wrote it down like this, looking like fractions. And first, we're going to multiply both the dividend and the divisor by 10 or 100 or 1,000 so that we get this to be a whole number. Let's say we first multiply by 10, step by step. Here's 130 and here's 0 0.6. Not yet the whole number, so we'll repeat it one more time, multiply both by 10, and now we get 1,300 divided by 6. And now we are ready to divide here. 1,300 divided by 6. Okay, 6 goes to 13. 2 times. 10 it goes once. And 4 it goes 6 times. And we can continue the division by putting decimal points here. And decimal zeros. Drop another zero here and it starts repeating itself with sixes over there. So the answer is now 216 point six repeats, so we put the bar over it.